Hello everyone, today we'll grow some crystals again. As in the previous video, I will try to describe the whole process of growing the crystals to you. First, we need to choose the material of which we will grow the crystal. Essentially, practically any substance is suitable for crystal growth. For example, protein crystals, crystals of iodine, metals crystals. Even air can be turned into a crystal when it is cooled to a certain temperature. For normal conditions, the best suited are an organic salts. And for this time, I will grow crystals of potassium alum. However, from personal experience, I would say that copper sulfate is the best substance for growing crystals at home. Table salt is not the best material. Bluestone is easier to buy and you will get a beautiful blue crystals using it. To begin, let's take any vessel and pour some of our salt. Next, pour hot water into the vessel and keep adding salt until it is no longer dissolvable. In this case, we get a saturated solution. Be sure to add hot water to be safe with the proportions. Different salts have their own solubility curves. Solubility curve is a measure of how many grams of the salt can be dissolved in a 100 ml of water at a certain temperature. Also, for all of the salts, the information is different. Once we have prepared our saturated salt solution, it has to be filtered while it is still hot. Filtering is not required. However, if you buy the chemicals in a garden shop, not in the special shop, the solution must be thoroughly cleaned from possible impurities. I would still recommend to initially use pure chemicals. After the filtration, let's leave our glass for a few days to let the crystal form. Crystal form as a result of the change in solubility of salts in the water when the temperature changes. Excess crystals, which cannot be dissolved in the solution, they fall to the bottom of the cup. After a day, we may notice that beautiful crystals were formed at the bottom of the beaker. These crystals will be used as seeds. Seed is a small crystal that is immersed into the solution, which will continue to grow near less of a crystal on top of it. Now, let's merge the solution into another beaker. Next, choose the most beautiful and large crystal from the mass of crystals that were formed at the bottom of the cup or the one that is easy to tie on a thread. I could also advise here to use a thin finishing line instead of threads. Once we have tied a crystal to a beaker, we pour our saturated solution of salt back there. You can tie a thread to a regular pencil and hang a crystal in a glass using it. However, for myself, I've decided to use a system in which the glass will be protected from dust. I think this is not necessary. At the moment, we can only wait for the crystal to grow. Over the time of growth of the crystal, it will become bigger and bigger. This occurs because the water from the solution will gradually evaporate, thereby increasing the concentration of the solution. Since we have a stability curve, we can learn that the excess material that cannot be dissolved must go somewhere. And this is the substance that formed our single crystal. If we had not found the seed, the crystal will be start to fall anywhere, on the bottom or on the walls of the beaker. And one more thing to mention. During the process of crystal growing, liquids from the cup will gradually evaporate and therefore the crystal grow. But that's also a problem. During the evaporation of liquid, it comes to a certain time when there won't to be enough solution in the cup anymore, and the further growth of the crystal will be impossible. To solve this, once a month or once in every two weeks, it is necessary to add a saturated solution into the beaker. The saturated solution must be prepared the same way as it was before. However, you should not add a warm solution. The saturated solution should be the same temperature as the grown crystal. Also, once a month or once every two weeks, I recommend filtering the solution to maintain its clearness. Over time, in the solution some specks or other dyes might occur, which can screw up the crystal. Over time, my crystal from potassium alum become bigger. 
as you can see, they have acquired a very interesting form. And now, after about 3 months, I have grown two beautiful crystals of potassium alum. They are not perfect and not entirely smooth, but I still got the single crystal structure. For those who don't know, a single crystal is a one large crystal, and a polycrystal is a set of crystals merged together during their growth. Once we have decided that our crystal is large enough and we want to stop its growth and then put it on the shelf, we need to do some more steps. Let's take out our crystal from the solution and dry its surface using a cloth. Next, we need to cover our crystal with a colorless nail polish. Just one or two layers is enough. This protects the crystal from drying and eventual destruction. After the nail is dried, crystal can be taken with bare hands. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to enjoy the beauty of my crystal with no further comments.